Welcome everybody, my name is Tim Sandy. I'm a VMware Technical Partner Manager and Systems Engineer. In today's session, this is going to be part two of three for my technical overview of what's new with vSphere 6.5. Now this part two is gonna be covering the topics of vSphere security in vSphere 6.5. Now if you haven't watched my first session covering vSphere and vCenter administration, I do recommend that you go back and watch the first one first it's not a mandatory thing, uh, but it does make sense to watch them in order. So again, this is part two covering vSphere security. So without further ado, let's get started. So the second category in what's new in vSphere 6.5 that we're discussing covers comprehensive built-in security. So we've accomplished this by securing not only the data, but as well as the infrastructure as well as access to it as well. Today in vSphere 6.0 update 2 and below, vSphere logging doesn't provide you with an overly detailed amount of information to assist you in troubleshooting. In the current and older versions, when I make a change to a virtual machine, I only get this Mike fully reconfigured this VM type of message as you see in the red box here. So you may ask, why is this a bad thing? Well, the problem is that this information is not actionable so I can't use it to my advantage. You might also ask, was this something that has a security implication as well? Did you move it from a secure network to an unsecure network potentially? So, you know, based on what kind of information this is, this may be very relevant information that you as an administrator need to know when somebody makes this kind of change. So the question is, can you use our vRealize log insight in order to help you with this? And the answer is no with the current and previous editions. So vRealize Log Insight only acts on the information that it receives. So because it's not actionable, vRealize Log Insight can't use this information currently. So as a tech preview for vSphere 6.5, you can see that now log information is actually actionable. So I can see that Mike Foley has moved the VM from the PCI vSwitch to the non-PCI vSwitch. This could just as easily be an example of moving the VM from a top secret network to an unclassified network. So the point here is that it is a security event. And this is something that you would need to be aware of, obviously, for compliance reasons and just for overall security. Now, vRealize Log Insight can now actually parse this and create an alert for you because this is an actionable item. So why is this important? Because the IT manager can be alerted immediately when the VM is now out of scope of compliance or security. So you will get an alert notification immediately after this was moved. So this brings full value to vRealize Log Insight and any other type of logging type solutions that you may have. So here in this slide, we're also talking about now that with vSphere 6.5, we have VM encryption. Encryption in 6.5 is implemented via storage policies. The application of an encrypted storage policy to an existing powered off VM will encrypt the disk. Uh, you might want to take a look at the sample encryption workflows for more details on that though. The key message here is that on the column to the right, you see that these data points must be emphasized that the key differentiator between the solutions and others is that the encryption is done below the VM and is VM agnostic and policy based. This slide points out that encryption is really the cooperation of two entities, the IT and security departments. Security traditionally manages the keys themselves. vCenter and IT are just key manager clients. It goes on to bring up the fact that the introduction of encryption into vSphere means it's probably time for you to reevaluate who has what privilege and to now leverage the new no cryptographer admin role for the majority of your IT admins. So being that you now have this capability, you might need to get with your security and IT departments and hash out who's going to have what permissions to that. In this slide, we discuss just what no crypto admin can and can't do. They can still do things like power a VM on or off, they can vMotion it, etc. However, they can't get access to the console or download the VM files off of the data store. Nor can they do any crypto type operations like encrypt or decrypt the VM. Any and all of these permissions can be granted to vCenter users, of course, but obviously you do need to want to do that very carefully as who you grant that type of permission to. This slide kind of shows you the overview of how the VM is encrypted. It reinforces the fact that the key from the tenant provided KMS is managed by the KMS and the KMS admin, and that these keys do not persist in the vCenter server. The customer is then responsible for managing the lifecycle of tenant keys. 
Another additional new added security feature enables you now to encrypt all your VMs while vMotioning them. As you see in the image, there are three options on how you can handle encrypted vMotion as a default behavior. The first is disabled, where no VMs will be encrypted during vMotion at all. The second is opportunistic. This uses encryption if the source and destination host support encryption. And third is required, which will only allow encrypted traffic. So if either the source or the destination host do not support encrypted vMotion, then the migration fails. vSphere 6.5 now has a unified extensible firmware interface secure boot process. Now, if you're not familiar with what that is, it's basically a specification for a software program that connects a computer's firmware to its operating system. UEFI is expected to eventually replace the old traditional BIOS that we've had for years. Like the BIOS, UEFI is installed at the time of manufacturing and is the first program that runs when the computer is turned on. The UEFI secure boot process verifies the boot process and file system integrity. It will verify any and all VIBs at boot time. If any one of them are not signed, it will fail the boot to server. So again, from a security perspective, this keeps your environment safe. Make sure that no one has installed any unauthorized VIBs of any kind. We're also excited to announce to you vSphere Integrated Containers, where we're enabling the best of both worlds for container-based cloud-native apps. vSphere Integrated Containers is the easiest way for vSphere users to bring containers into an existing vSphere environment. Integrated containers deliver an enterprise container infrastructure that provides the best of both worlds for the developers as well as the vSphere operations teams. Containers are now just as easy to enable and manage as virtual machines. No changes to processes or tools are required for those IT admins. For cloud native apps, there are two audiences that we're trying to serve. One is the developers themselves that of course want to leverage native Docker interfaces and continue to use the tools that they're familiar with. And then for IT department, those operational guys, they want to have control and visibility of these categories of applications. They like to also leverage the tools and processes that they've been using for years. So vSphere Integrated Containers delivers just that, enables the best of both worlds for both the developers as well as your IT operational admins. So that completes part two of the three-part series of what's new with vSphere 6.5. Again, this one covered vSphere security. Please come back to join me with my part three of three, which is going to be covering availability and resource management for vSphere 6.5. So again, I hope this information was valuable to you. I look forward to you coming back and watching part three of this series. Thank you and have a wonderful day.